ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ How about now? Yep, you sound magnificent. Okay. Where about you, Thanks, Lauren? Do you have your microphone on, your headset on? I'm ready to roll. All right, you sound a little distant. Move your mic in a bit closer. Hey, he's in Ontario. That? <laughs> How's that? That's not bad. That's good enough. I should send you a proper headset. I have the one you gave me. Oh, did I give you one? Yeah. All right. It just sounds a little different. I think a lot of a lot of times when it sounds different when I'm recording it, it actually sounds fine on the show. I think it's a little something to do with the internet reception and the software I use and blah, 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 blah. I can hear you well, fine. It, I can hear I'm you. I'm on Google Chrome like you asked. I'm Ooh. hardwired in. Perfect. The only thing is I'm in a big room in my basement, so maybe it sounds big because it doesn't no, it sounds me in the room. No, it sounds, sounds fine. Good. It yeah. sounds fine. This is uh, better than some other podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been on for a minute and we've talked about well, nothing. I don't care. I know you That's don't care. Good. I didn't say you should. I didn't say anything. I just said I. We. I was going to say we've been it's on adequate. for a minute. It's adequate. We've shout been out on, to my we've... friends. Shout out to my friends in Cuba. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to that today. I left. <laughs> that actually was Brad Williamson sent me a message. That oh, actually man. that that show was entertaining. Oh my god. Oh man. That was funny. People should be listening. This is on the free channel. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kelly, this is on the free channel. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, so people should go and join our Patreon thing so they can hear some of the, uh, the carrying. It's such a it, – the, the, the Patreon channel is just a wide variety of things. It's some very serious chit-chats, fireside chats. It's the guys getting together, having nothing but fun, and and giving each other the the, the gears. It's the viewer mail, which is always fun to answer. Yep, we're, if we get to it. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been doing pretty good. We've doing it, been doing yeah, it, we're... doing it about once a month. But we're just uh, yeah, there's a ton of month. emails, and we yeah. get talking about whatever the subject is, and away we go. So, Lauren, hey, are you going to the uh, RPM meet in Cocoa Beach? I was booking that today. I booked the hotel, and I, I have sent in my package for registration, and uh, the family is excited to go to Florida for uh, December 31st to January 7th. Holy mackerel. When, wow. is, when is the actual event? 4th, 5th, and 6th, and we're going to take Isabel to Disneyland when we're down there. Well, that, that's, a long, that's, a long, that's a long flight, Disneyland. You should yeah. just go to Disney World because <laughs> you'll only be about 60 miles away. Yeah. You know, I want to ride. You know, there's a new train now called the Bright Line. Yeah. Um, Did you see yeah. Danny Harmon's uh, video? No, I didn't. Oh, check check out his video. It's Dis a, what a ride. Distant signal. Yeah, distant signal. Wow. So are you going to have a display there, Lauren, or are you just going for? So we're going to have like a, a manufacturer style setup. So pop-up pop table will have recent models we have livered. It will have some of our upcoming ones and uh some swag and that and meet people down in the uh the, the florida panhandle that are down at the rpm it's a good show i've been a few times it's a good show maybe on the saturday night you, you're the friday night probably the saturday night because i'll probably be golfing on this friday but we, on one of those two nights though we should go out to dinner absolutely that would be fun there's a couple of good places around Cocoa beach um we won't go to ron john's uh surf shop though you you probably will you got to go to ron john's surf shop yeah izzy and your wife will probably go what is that noise that's the traffic out in front of my house oh, really got this, he's got a souped up car and he drives like 50 miles an hour <laughs> down the street is it just a civic <laughs> no yeah it sounds like a civic but it's actually uh it's it's a uh it looks like it might be a challenger oh yeah it's the muffler he's got on it. I was in the grocery store the other day down in uh, in Florida, and this old couple comes out, which isn't unusual in Florida. and And I was I was in there sitting in the car because we had the dog with us and blah blah blah. And she's not used to being alone just yet. And uh, this older couple comes out, and there's this really cool 
Dodge Charger sitting in front of me. And this old couple comes out, and this is the car they get into. And they had to be in their late 70s. And not only did they have the Dodge Charger, he had a radar detector in it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you go, man, you go. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's checking to see how slow he's going. <laughs> no, I think he was checking to see how fast yeah, he's going. It's going. Oh, that man. was cool. I thought that was cool. All right. Yeah, so, cool. uh, Lauren, when, you, when you're down at the RPM, do you think there'll be any Rapido trains? You are fast tracked to model railroading fun. Rapido trains are fast track to model railroading fun. Lauren, do you think there'll be any of those? There should be two tables worth. Oh, really? Are they going down too? Bill Schneider usually goes. Oh, okay. I hope by then I've at least interviewed Bill Schneider. I'm making arrangements to interview Bill Schneider. Right now, I believe he's in China. While we're recording this, he's in China. He may be in or China England. Or, or England or England. This is, or I can even tell you what the date is today. Hang on. Hang on. Well, we were going to, we're going to have a, between the, while we're listening to the show, we got to have a, a team meeting, a mm -hmm. little, a, a, an update for Lauren. Let me hang on. I'm looking at the big calendar on the wall. And today is Monday, November the 13th. And then uh, this is part one of the Otter Valley Railroad pop-up event show where we talk about uh, the Otter Valley pop-up event that was a roaring success and all the people we interviewed during the time there. We interviewed so many people, Lauren, that we got to do two shows. Wow. Quality um, day with quality people, Lionel. It was a quality day with quality people. On this show, we got uh, the guy from the Delta Model Railroad Club. Uh, I call him the BC Club guy, the way I got it listed here. But he says his name during during the interview. We talked to him. Remember him? He came. He was uh, doing business in Toronto, and then he came down to the show anyways. Stuart Goldman's president of the Delta Motor Railroad Club. Oh, look at you. How come you know his name? Is he a regular customer or something? He's a customer of ours and been a, a good friend of OVR, and Delta is a, a club that we, we supply on the West Coast. Well, there you go. Mm. You you are connected, buddy. You are connected. And then we talked to Ben Wang of Aurora Miniatures. And you, uh, Lauren, you're working closely with Ben, aren't you? Uh, a lot of our projects are, are co-mingled, whether it's tooling and truck sharing or shipping together to have synergies. And uh, Ben is a very eager up-and-coming manufacturer in the hobby market. He had a bunch of his new cars on display. and. Uh, yeah, Ben's a very good friend of mine, and uh, you know we try to work together on a lot of stuff. Um, do you think uh, Ben owns any Rapido trains? You're fast track to model railroading fun. If it's L, if it's H O, the fast track is Rapido. Lauren, you got to answer the question after the commercial. I think he does. Okay, <laughs> he's a modern guy, so he's probably got a couple of GMD ones and. Probably a handful of the modern cars they have. Um, and then we talked to Dan Garcia. I like talking to Dan Garcia. I like all the folks there at that company where he works, which we just mentioned. I like all the folks there. But Dan has got a great personality. He's a fun guy to talk to. He's a very up upbeat kind of fellow. I enjoy talking to Dan Garcia. And also I, known as Gomez. He is looks he? Like Gomez, too. Yeah, how come? Is that a nickname at the at the plant? I think originally Jason gave him that name Gomez back in the day with just kind of a reference to the Adams family. Ah, okay. He also wanted to say that he was like Portuguese too. So I think that was the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Portuguese. Yeah. Portuguese. <laughs> I still call him Gomez. Well, yeah, Maybe. but you're on a first name basis with everybody in the industry. That is true. You're connected. You're connected. You're our, you are our connection to the industry. Well, that reminds me. I was going to talk to um, the fellow, Harry Wong, from RMC. I was going to do a show with him about uh, what happened at the Na the NMRA National Convention. Uh, I, and I could make a list of the people I want to talk to, but it just gets longer and longer and longer. So that's that now That never works. So now i got to have a list like of about four people, and I concentrate on getting those four people on, and then we go from there. 
We need that roving reporter. We really do. Yeah, we need something. We need a what we need is a producer. We need more people to sign up on Patreon so we can have a producer. That's what we need. We can pay a producer. And let's see. We talked to Dan Garcia. We talked to uh, our buddy uh, Bernard Helen from Mini Prince, miniprints.com. Go there and uh, tell them Lionel sent you and see if that helps. One and of the best producers of uh, 3D printed items in the hobby. The 3D printing guy, that's for sure. And then Ted Cosella, who is uh, president of a local club in that area because we're talking about water to, waterloo central model railroaders right because we're right now if nobody's already guessed we're talking to uh, uh lauren james aka skew <laughs> <laughs> i love that skew. nickname and then uh, and the modeler simply known as kelly we're not talking to scott lister because today actually today the they were recording this he had his first grandchild Mm. So now him and Queso are going to have a contest to see who can post the most pictures of their grandkids. Pictures, yeah, which you don't, you can't blame them. You can't no. blame them. But uh, Tom, Tom has got the knack for it. I think he's going to yeah. crush. I think he's going to crush Scott with all those pictures. Oh yeah, I, don't I think, think Scott's just. Ha- I think Scott's happy because he's a grandfather and he's going to get his dog back probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking to him today, and of course Scott has to be busy all the time. What so, is he building this time? Well, no, he's got he's staying the, he's staying at his daughter's house, which is like six hours away from his place, because uh-huh. his uh, son in law's in the Marines, and they're staying, I think, at Camp Lejeune. I think I can't say for sure. And anyways, I'm talking to Scott, and he's been to the hospital once, seen the grandchild, and you know he's leaving it up to his wife and everybody to do the carrying on. He says, "I'm running out of things to do." I said, "Well, what have you done so far?" He says, "Well, I power washed the house." <laughs> and he says and then i painted the garage doors oh, wow <laughs> and i said and he says you know there's other things i could do but i don't you know i kind of not sure i should be stepping on you know i'm out of bounds i shouldn't really be taken for granted that i can do his stuff so the poor guy's just sitting there twiddling his thumbs already and i said well you can come down and come on down to my place i got jobs for you yeah that, that that grandson's that grand is a grandson, right? I think so. Yes, he's that's gonna be he's gonna spoil that kid. Boy. Yeah, he's well, gonna have he's, a ball. He's, he's gonna have a ball doing his that. His two daughters have got him wrapped around their. Finger. Oh, oh yeah. my god! Um, all right, that's that's enough. And then we talked to Chris Palmeras from Inner Mountain. And then after the show, we'll talk a little bit about what's happening out at OVR. Do you think we've covered? Do you think we've described the show enough, uh, Lauren, or did you have something else you wanted to say? I think it's just going to be wonderful, and I'm happy that we're able to have the event and, and bring all these great people to the podcast. And podcast is getting bigger, that's yeah, for sure. And podcast is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, are you going to do this ever again? You think you'll do this uh, pop up event ever again? Well, I plan on having a fourth annual event next year, and hopefully I can get a couple of my Cuba friends to come up, too. What are you talking? What is this Cuba thing? <laughs> I actually have five customers from Cuba. Oh, really? I sell Cuban trains to that listen to the podcast. Well, they listen wow. to the podcast? Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, we got people from Chile and Brazil and South America. and Switzerland. All, all, Switzerland. You know what I always say? The sun never sets on the AML nation. That's right. All right. Okay. Well, we killed 15 minutes with this uh, intro. Um, you always have to be careful. I always have to be careful doing these because I could do a whole. My problem is I could do a show with you guys now and I could kill an hour without even trying hard. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the show now, Kelly. So do you know what to do? Yes. Subway chimes go. Okay. So now I'm here with a fella and your name is? Stu. Stu, do you have a last name? I do, Stu Gumans. Stu Gumans, how do you spell that? G O U M A N S. Okay. And can I you know, what's the last three digits on your credit card? Well, that's uh, one, <laughs> two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you came up to me, you're from Vancouver. Yeah. And you're here you're here in Toronto for some work. But you're a model railroader, so you came over to the show and you say you listen to podcasts in Vancouver. You bet. You and your guys. Yeah, we're, uh, we've are we got a club out west. Uh, it's called the Delta Model Railway Club. And we have about uh, 30 members and growing. Right. And about 15 years old, the, uh, the club. Okay. And of all ages, from 
uh, about 11 to 12 up to 90. The hobby's getting like way younger than it ever used to be. It absolutely is. And this is the best time to bring in uh, some of the young folks because um, they, there's a lot of young folks out there that want to understand, you know, intricacies of modeling and kind of like, hey, this is kind of cool. I get to paint. I get to put something together. Right. Um, it's not, you know, they're not afraid of the hobby. Yes. This generation. They seem yeah. to be okay, really good point. into it. And, yeah. and then we've got fo- we got uh, some young kids that are, um, you know, boys and girls of all age, doesn't matter. And they, they're coming in and taking an approach of, hey, this is kind of cool. I want to do this. They're taking old stuff, the old blue box Atherin kits, so, right. um, kit bashing them, getting, getting started. Right. And then saving up for the kind of the bigger stuff that they want. Because, th- because when we were, when you and I were... Ten, there was no way to connect with people. That, that's right. And now, now they've got Instagram, they got Facebook, they got YouTube. They're finding each other and, and, and of their own age group. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that, so, whereabouts is the club located? It's in um, it's in Delta, uh, BC. Okay. Where is that in relation to Vancouver? So that's about uh, uh, thirty minutes from the airport south. Okay. So south. Yeah. South. Okay. Yeah. So not too far from the American border. And, well, actually, believe it or not, we are, are probably about a three minute drive from the border. Okay. From the Point Roberts border. And Point Roberts is a very small little enclave of U.S. enclave that you have to get through via Canada, believe it or not. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's neat because there's places, uh, there's... Um, there's the Northwest Angle that's up over here. And uh, and in Nova Scotia, there's... Uh, there's uh, yeah, there's an, an island. island. What's the island called? You there's know, a, that, that's escaping me the name. It's, but I, I but know you have to go through Maine. You have to go through Maine to get to it. To yeah. get to Canada. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys modeling out there in Delta? Oh, well, it's great. We, uh, we're, we were modeling uh, HO, and we also have an N-scale division as well. Okay. Um, we've kind of put it on hold as we kind of grow our club a bit more for space-wise. But we do have a permanent layout. All right. And we actually we started as a module club, believe it or not. Um, it started in back in 08, and we said yeah, with a local hobby shop. And a whole bunch of us all got together and formed a club. And we had like, what, like 30, 40 people the first night just to get started. And, huh. and then it kind of windled out. But it got sure. it just did modules and got into local shows. And then it got to a point where we needed to set up more. So we found a spot. Okay. And we set up a permanent layout. All right. And the uh, place is okay? Like the, the rental place is okay? Right. Yeah. It's actually great. And, but now we're at the point where uh, the, uh, the place we have is, is awesome. But we're growing too fast now. So now we have, we need to grow. We have more members that want to come in wow. and run at a time. And so now it's almost like we have to put schedules out. So it's very, we need more space. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're like perfect. You're like what I think the hobby is nowadays. How old are you, gentlemen are you? Well, I'm, I'm just in my, uh, my late 40s. Okay. Yeah. Because... But that's young, really, compared it, to what the hobby used to be. It, yes, it did. Yeah, when I first started, I was probably back in, uh, you know, as a young kid, you know, in the eighties, right, and yeah. early eighties, um, and getting to it. But I, when I when I knew folks that were really into the hobby, uh, modeling, you know, uh, some. <laughs> Pretty uh, kind of you know uh, spectacular layouts back then, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like a while cool, and they were all in their late sixties and seventies at that point, right? Yeah. And this is back in the eighties, and you're thinking, oh man, I can't do this, and then, but then when you f- see how far it's come in terms of access to materials and yeah. you know the dollar stores and the <laughs> you know the, um, the, the the places to get um, interesting things, you you your creativity almost suddenly goes, wow, we could do that. That's yeah, I know. I think that's part of what's making the hobby grow is there's a lot of access to. Uh, products that are making people produce better layouts and models. Absolutely, yeah. You're seeing transformations of layouts now. They're like, hey, you know what? That's a better idea. Yeah. Let's try that. Yeah. You know, a more realistic um, yeah. piece to it. And what do you think then of me personally? I think one of the things I miss, like I liked, you know, taking the Atlas yellow box Jeep 7 and having to shave off the handrails and put new handrails on. Yeah. I kind of miss that part of the detailing part of the hobby i mean the new the new models are so well detailed they are they are and they're getting detailed and believe it or not um uh, there's uh new people to the hobby are now looking at for that now they want it now hey you know what got the great details done but if i could add in more things maybe an air conditioner or something right. or some little extra detail that's perfect yeah but you know yeah there is a point where it's like do i miss taking a kit out of the box when it's together yes but then a lot of times I'm like well you know what? I'll pay the money just to have it. It's ready to go, and then I can weather it, right? And add some some more. But so I, you, you know, I I come from the blue, I started in blue box. Yeah, yeah. And that was the best because you could 
you know, oh, I, spend you, it for and, hours. And, you can and, put, and if you've got a layout with 400 cars on it, if a, 300 of them are blue box, nobody's going to notice. No. I mean, no, you, you don't. And, and there's one, we have one gentleman in our club who takes older blue box um, uh, engines and refurbishes them and gets them oh, running yeah. like you wouldn't even, couldn't even tell the difference. Wow. And, and what, the, the weathering and the lighting. Yeah. And it's like, wow. And he's like, yeah, everything's good. I said, and I said, really? So what's, he said, what about the motor? He says, it's the same motor. It still runs. Oh, and it's geez. quiet. And it's quiet. And I so said, what is wow. your club model? What is it? What's it? What area? What era? What area? What? Uh, so we're, we, it was kind of a freestyle of area eras, but it does have a uh, uh, north, uh, west coast. Okay. Feet. Yeah. And it's what we did with this club was in our original um, modular layouts, we had breweries, we had yeah. farms and everything. But when we got to the club, we, we said, how do we bring in new people to the hobby? Let them be creative. Let them do what they want. And here's a section, go. Right. Here's another section, go, right? And we want you to kind of be, here, what do you think of an idea here? Here's the track. The track's done. But you want it to all about, tie together, too. Yeah. Yeah, and you do. You do want to tie it together. But we wanted to give folks of different ability, like abilities, whether they're just getting started or some advanced, just to kind of learn from each other. Seems like you guys, it seems like uh, this is kind of a coincidence, but my lately, for some reason or other, I woke I was interviewing Gordy Robinson, the president of the NMRA, which I've said on this particular show that we've listened to and the people we've interviewed about 10 times today. Uh, someday the podcast will be really good. <laughs> I, I, I hope you get a chance to hear it when it's good. Uh, and now you're now you're going to go back and you're going to say to the guys, yeah, he's about that goofy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I I think the way I'm listening to you talk, it sounds to me like I, I feel like the... The best way to describe the hobby now is in three words. Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. You know what? That You've hit it right on. You hit it on the mark because it's, it's, you're, you're creating um, conversations, you're creating bonds, you're creating friendship with everyone there. I mean, I've met I, you know, all the members in our club. They're friends of mine now, right? Right. And we've been able to kind of increase our, our knowledge and you know, we've got great camaraderie between us, right? Yeah. But the best part about going to the club is that we and especially for the young folks and you know including my generation as well as we, we put those phones away oh yeah it's sitting over there we only take it out to take fit pictures and videos right but we're not on them we're we're focused on yeah. what we need to do we want to run we want to operate and um and just and actually engage in conversation because when we bring in the um when the, the junior members come in they're in there and they have to work with each other if you guys don't want to run into each other you got to right. make sure you know who's coming on what line, right? Uh, yeah. And so it creates conversation. And these are for kids that, we've got a lot of kids that are just, you know, that um, uh, may not want to have social interaction, maybe don't want to do this. And this, we give them the avenue to be, um, we give them the avenue to be more fl- flexible, right? Yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be a great outlet for. What about you personally? What do you model? Uh, well, for me, uh, Steam. Oh, yeah? So definitely steam. Uh, Southern Pacific is my favorite, and of course, uh, Canadian steam. And what manufacturers do you like to get your steam locomotives from? Well, I got uh, two, and that's uh, both um, uh, Rapido Trains for being Canadian. Okay. Uh, and I have a couple of the Hudsons, and then, of course, the uh, uh, Broadway Limited. Okay. Uh, they're my, uh, my you know two we, favorites. You know what we say about Rapido Trains? What's that? It's your fast track to model railroading fun. It's your fa- that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Rapido train to fast track to model railroading fun. You put a nickel in there, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what channel this will be on. Are you a member of the Patreon channel? I am. Uh, I will be. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. It's 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 well. You if you like the Monday show, you're going to love listening on Tuesdays. Excellent. I'm going to love that. Yeah, because it's much more. It's uh, I'm starting to call it Lionel's Little Playhouse. Yeah. Because it's just we just have fun and so like fun. yeah, and also I interviewed. Like recently, I interviewed Chris Wayman, who's been coming on the podcast more, and it's kind of just a one-on-one, which is a lot of fun yeah. because you're finding out more and more about people. So we kind of, trust me, if you like the Monday show, you will love the Tuesday show. Oh, that's great. We'll definitely look forward to it. Uh, uh, you to don't look like you're in your late 40s. Are you bullshitting me? No. Wow. Yeah, you're look a, at that. I lost it all. See? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, As so, I tip my hat. Yeah. <laughs> For those that can't see. Yeah, okay. Um, you seem like you could be the president of the club. And in fact, I am. I had a feeling. Yeah, that was a good guess. Not only am I a member, I'm also the president. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been the president? Oh, wow. Uh, I think I'm on uh, 
I must be year five now. Really? Year four or five, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you're just loving it then? I, I am loving it. Um, it, is, it is a lot of work though. Um, I think through COVID was a, um, or they call it the late unpleasantness, was uh, it was, it, we kept the club together and we did schedules and made sure everyone got out there, yeah. kept the club going, stayed in our space and um, uh, we got through it. And now we've got, um, we've got our executive and our members, we all help each other out. Cool. And we make, th- just keep on going. I think like, you mentioned that, right? It's just to keep the bond of friendships going is, yes. is just keep the conversations going. Um, and let people do what they want to. The best thing about this hobby is you're going to have a guy that plays the French horn for the Dallas Symphony Orchestra and another guy that fixes agricultural equipment. And if they find a common bond in model railroading, not only will they become friends, they'll become lifelong friends. Yep. And yeah, I, I, that I is tell the you that beauty is, of this hobby. Yeah, I think I, that's what we got to sell going forward as, you know, to support the NMRA and things like that. That's what we got to sell. We, we, yes, we do, and I think you you got to work on the um, uh, bringing in the the younger generation, um, and I think they'll find us on their own. They do, and I think they do. Um, but you have to support them. Oh, for sure. Um, there but are, that's that is the beauty of the always, new world. There's always friction, right? There's like, oh well, you're too young, you can't operate on this layout. I'm like, why not? Let them go. Yeah, they'll figure it out. You guys sounds like what is the website? Do you guys have a website? We for do. Your? It's uh, Delta Model Railway Club dot com. Delta Model Railroad Club dot com. A railway club. Railway. A railway club. Tim, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's British. That's right. <laughs> British. British heritage. In, uh, we thought it would be easier to spell out. I guess when we were making the website. And oh the yeah. At the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Delta Model Railway Club. Club. Dot com. Dot com. You can find us on Instagram as well, and uh, and the. Uh, do you pretty do pretty good at keeping that up? Because that's one thing we I, do. You have to. Um, yeah. You, you got to keep on it. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a members Facebook group as well. Facebook's actually. Um, good for one part of the generation of our modelers. Instagram is, is for the other generation, yeah. right? And so you have to, you, you got you to gotta roll with the changes, right? If you got to know where to, to place are things. Are you aware of our fans page for the podcast? Yes, absolutely. Make Many sure. of our members are, uh, are already listening well, to you. Make sure you post stuff about the club on there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Let's keep it, keep it like we want to know about it. For sure. All right. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, I'm going to let you go. I All forget right. your first name already. That's Stu. Oh, hey, Stu. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Say it's goodbye, Stu. It's a pleasure Stu. to meet you. Say goodbye, Stu. All right. Goodbye, sir. No, say goodbye, Stu. Yeah, goodbye, Stu. There you go. Okay, so now I'm talking to Ben. Don't tell me. Wang? Yes. W A W A N G. Okay, look at that. I remembered your whole name and everything. Yeah, good job. And he is from uh, Roar Miniatures. Mm-hmm. We talked years ago. With Tony Cook, and we also talked once here. Yeah. And that was like a couple of years ago now. That was uh, yeah, before oh, their first release of anything. Yes. And so what's new and different in the old uh, the old Aurora Miniatures? So we're in our third year of business now. Right. And uh, we have announced, formally announced, five HO scale freight cars. Okay. That are in, uh, uh, the first freight car has been released this year in May. And then the other four are currently in various stages of development. Okay. And which? What are the cars? I see um, a. Bo- I see a. Yeah. So the first car that went to market in May of 2023 was the Gunderson 6276 cubic foot. Uh, it's a 50 foot, 50 foot plate F box car. So okay. It's a high cube box car. Right. And how how are, were sales or reception or? Yeah, we are we are effectively almost sold out. Oh, good. All the numbers. So we for the first run we made. 48 different road numbers across six paint schemes. Wow. Yeah. And it's 59.99 in US funds. 59.99 US and 74.99 Canadian. Okay. Yeah. So now in 3 years of having this company, mm-hmm. this is your full-time job, right? It's my full-time job now. Yep. yep. And what do you think has surprised you the most? What didn't you see coming? What was a, what's been different than you expected? And I think it's the amount of work and the amount of dedication you have to put in to actually get products, uh, get results, right. basically, in, into the hands of the customers. I think uh, that's a very rewarding experience. Right. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work, actually. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, okay, because after the, the locomotive you brought out, you mm-hmm. brought, actually, did the containers come out first? The containers came out first in 2022. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and they were beautiful. And are you making any more of those? 
uh, we plan on doing a rerun, but not immediately. So probably uh, a few years down the line. How long, have you been to China yet to the factory? No. Do you plan on doing that? Oh, I plan on going soon, yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, what do you like about being in this industry? Just uh, the fact that it's rewarding? or It's very rewarding when you deliver the product and then the customers see it and they can appreciate what you do. I think that's a very rewarding experience for me. And also because I, I like the model trains as well. Yes. And so to be able to develop products that myself would enjoy having is also a very rewarding experience. And how do you keep from producing something that another company's making? And that's the thing. I don't know... What everybody else is doing. Exactly. So I just go out... When I go out to Railfan, I, I, I just look at what's out there, what's commonly out there. And then uh, things that I have an interest in, I begin to do research. So typical... I hear, I hear that a lot from, uh, from guys that are development engineers. Yeah. Uh, that they do what they like. Mm-hmm. And I always think, well, that's great, but if what about if nobody else likes it? I Like, how do you get a sense of what you feel the customer is going to want? Yeah, so my primary focus for freight cars, at least, are freight cars that were built after the year 2000. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think there's a fairly large gap in this segment of the market. So there, there's not a lot of, you know, two, two, year 2000 and beyond freight cars that's being made in HO scale model form. Right. So, yeah. So, and then I, I go out a lot to, to watch trains. And then do you, are you the guy designing the car and everything, like doing it on CAD and all that? No, I don't personally do the right. computer-aided design, but I do, do, I do make all the preliminary research. Okay. So, for example, how many of the how many of this certain type of freight car are, is out there in real life and what kind of road names and road numbers are there? And uh, what kind of variations you have for different... Because a production of a freight car, the real car, can last for many years. Right. It can go on for as long as 20 or 30 years. And yeah. during that time frame, you're going to have different variations of the of same cars. car. Right, yeah. This is a cool car. I like this car. This is a really neat car. This is the uh, 50-foot Gunderson, right? Correct. So you can see on this one... Uh, different uh, brake setups. Right. Uh, for a car that's built earlier. This was built in 2004. Right. And this car is built in 2016. So that's kind of neat. I don't think we, there is a lot of manufacturers that are concentrating on stuff that's actually built now. Exactly. Exactly. And then you have to, there, there's very few manufacturers that actually go this far into getting uh, road name and era specific right. underbody details. And that's not an easy thing to do. And how do you go about, like, do you contact a company? Do you lay under the car? Yeah. So we, <laughs> Do you go lay on the tracks? We spent, and- <laughs> spent, spent a lot of time photographing, taking videos, and just, in general, just watching trains. Because in today's modeler, yeah. when, they're buy, when they're spending $60 for a car. Exactly. They want the best. They want the best. They want and nothing but the best. And they and want it to be exactly right. Do you find that to be frustrating? Like, I mean, on an HO scale car, mm-hmm. if, a, if a part of the brake gear is like three inches the wrong way and somebody finds out, they'll go ballistic. And like, do you find that frustrating? It is frustrating, but it depends on the complexity of the project. Right. When the project is very complex and then you nail it in the end is is a very rewarding Okay, experience. cool. So there are challenges that we have to face and there are perhaps sacrifices that we have to make. Right. But we try to, you know, find the, uh, uh, an e- equilibrium basically to balance between the level of details that we can do and to also keep the cost of a, the model to a reasonable amount. Okay. Um Today I was uh, listening. To the Walter Osternak is here. Mm-hmm. The Polka King. Okay. Do you yeah. like polka? The accordion. <laughs> yeah. Accordion. Yes. <laughs> Did you? Is that? Yeah. I see you brought your wife or girlfriend. Uh, girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. Did you introduce her to Walter? No. Because I would have really impressed her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you listen to polka music ever? <laughs> not, not, not a lot. No. <laughs> you know, you're one of my favorite people to interview. You're a fun guy. Yeah. Um, okay. So three years, you guys are doing pretty good. Yes. It's, uh, b- there's been some struggles, but you're learning as you go. Exactly. Probably, and you're looking forward to being in the business for years and years, decades and decades. Yes. As long as we can keep doing this, I will keep doing it. All right. Cool. Yeah. Sounds very cool. It's fun to, uh, and we'll talk again. Yep. Say goodbye, Ben. Bye, guys. No, say goodbye, Ben. Goodbye, Ben. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, now I'm sitting with, we're still at the, uh, what do we call this show? It's the Otter Valley Manufacturers Pop-Up. Oh yeah, it's annual. pop-up. Yes. It seems more, it seems more uh, substantial than a pop-up. Yeah, I'd say so too. It's way better than what I was expecting. It's way bigger here. It's cool. It's very cool. If, if you're, you're missing it if you're not here. Yeah, even if you're in California, you yeah. should be here. Yeah, because the manufacturers are here. Like Intermountain is here, Rapido. It's just, it's amazing. It soundtracks and yes, you together in one building. I know. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like a cage match. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm sitting here with a fellow named Ted Cosilla. And let me see if I remember this. K-O-C-Y-L-A. Your memory is so good, Lionel. Yes, you got it. And uh, we knew, we've known each other, what, 30 years ago? Oh, well, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and when you, you first came out to our place, it was... Yeah. Pretty much just bench work, yeah. Yeah, it was. And it, and it was like 14 levels, and it was a mushroom. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's in a Quonset hut. Right. Uh, out Just outside of Kitchener, St. Mary's. Mary Hill. Mary Hill. <laughs> which is... <laughs> which is right by Kitchener, yes. Yeah, yeah. Kitchener-Waterloo, which is roughly 50, mi- or 50 miles, 60, maybe 80 kilometers yeah. west, west of Toronto. West of Toronto, yes. Yeah. And you guys, when did you start that club? We moved, well, the club actually started in 1989 in, in a founding member's basement. We were just an operating crew. Right. And we were saving up money, and we eventually got our own place in down, near downtown Kitchener. And then that sustained us for a couple of years. And then in 1996 is when we moved into Mary Hill, which right. will be our final move because we never want to do that again. Right, yeah. And it's, yeah, we can't move what we've just built. And you moved it into, a, now do you guys own this Quonset Hunt? Our landlord, if you want to put him that, is a member. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. And basically, we're, yeah, we're set in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and you said you used to be an old chinchilla farm or something? Correct. And yeah. So you guys got it. You had to clean it all out. Yeah, when we first went in there, there were still animals in the barn. <laughs> and our, our dispatch office is, uh, it was a chinchilla barn. Our, our dispatch office is in the kill room, if I, <laughs> kind so, of morbid, but that's what was there. Yeah, so how long did it take you guys to get the thing to a livable condition so you could start building the layout? Probably two years. Okay. And t- it, it took us just because, yeah, we missed open houses and layout tours and things because of that. That's right. Until we could have at least something to show people with something running on it. Yeah, years ago, and I don't know if they still do it, there used to be a fabulous layout tour in the Kitchener Waterloo area. It's still there, the Double Headers Tour. That's right, the Double Headers Tour. It's a great idea. They do the same kind of thing in Pennsylvania. I actually got to interview the, lady that, the ladies that run that. It's in Pennsylvania area, they have this huge website. I just did an interview, and I just mentioned it on the podcast. I should listen to the podcast. Maybe I'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they do the same thing down there through the Philadelphia, Harrisburg, all through that area. Very popular thing to do. It, if you haven't been on a lay art tour, you need to go. Yeah. And so what's the actual name of your club? It is, it's a mouthful. It's the Waterloo Region Model Railway Club. Okay. And how many members do you have now? About 25, if I remember right. Okay. And has that been pretty standard? It's standard, yeah. Yeah? It hasn't gone up and down much? We lost a few members with COVID. Okay. But as as far as we've been told, we did really well for the pandemic because okay. we at least kept functioning, even though we only had a handful of people working on things. Right. So, yeah, we lost a few people, but then we've bounced right back. We've actually gained more members than from oh, before cool. the pandemic. And do you have, like, a website, Facebook page? Uh, yes, www.sudburydivision.ca, or our initials both work, wrmrc.ca. But Sudbury Division is easier to remember. W-R-M-R-C. Wa- Waterloo Region Model Railway okay. Club. And what's the other one? Sudbury Division. Dot .ca. Dot .ca. Okay. And is it, uh, who does your website? Uh, Chris Vandeheide is our, he's one of our members and he is our webmaster. And what I remember about the layout was it was some sort of massive mushroom design. It is John Armstrong's mushroom on steroids. Yes. <laughs> and who designed it? <laughs> our, one of our founding members, Jurgen Clayline. Okay. Who, he's like John Armstrong in that he can take a scene and get the basic elements right put it on a layout so that it looks like the town you say it is okay but he can think in three dimensions right so he's like one in a million okay yeah and so like i remember it was just this like what's the size of the quonset hut it's 2000 square feet 40 yeah. feet by 50 feet and i just remember this was just the first time i saw it was just uh 
bench work. And I remember it was just this massive mushroom design. And has that worked? It's working, yes. Like 30, have, years, 30 years later, you're basically... 30 years later, you should see the helices on this thing now. Yeah, Because <laughs> you, you haven't been to our place in about 20 years. No, so I haven't. It's, it's, <laughs> it's mushroomed. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's insane now. We've got helices going into the sky now, if, if you look up from really? the ground floor. Yeah, operating sessions? Operating sessions every two months. Really, eh? Yeah, second okay. Saturday of every second month. Um, what else can we tell it's, folks? It's on our calendar if you go on the website. We All right. when they are. And Sudbury, we have open houses. Sudburydivision.ca. Sudburydivision.ca. All right. And I should explain, it is, we model CP Sudbury Division in the 1970s. Okay. Because, and wh- how did you decide on that? Because why not if you're from Kitchener-Waterloo? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's, again, from our founding days, the, the, the layout owner was modeling CP and cottage country in the 70s. We had been buying equipment to run on his layout, and we just decided why change things. Right, yeah. Because we have already invested in this equipment. That's a cool time to be in, uh, modeling anyways. I didn't think of it at the time because it was the near past, but yes. that was 30 years ago. Yeah. Now it's like history. Yeah. That's a fascinating yeah. part. I, I've had that discussion with our buddy Uncle Dave, and you know, taking pictures of SD40s. When they were new? Oh, who's taking a picture of that? Oh, I know. You think, oh, God, not SD40s again. Like, yeah. why, don't get, why don't they buy some Gs or something? You know? And now it's like you, you, yeah. you're foaming if you find one running still. <laughs> I know. It's re- so what is, I get, we'll finish up with, after 30 years of building this layout, this mushroom layout and a Quonset hut that's 40 by 50. 40 by 50. <laughs> what is uh, like the one thing you're looking back and you kind of go, What's the one thing where it worked out and the one thing where you kind of go, eh, maybe that wasn't the right way to go? Helices and a mushroom design work. You get a lot of, you know, that that's, works really well. Where you shouldn't do it is in a Quonset hut. <laughs> <laughs> a rectangular building with 90 degree angles. That is what you want, where you don't lose space as you go up. <laughs> now, how did you guys handle that? Oh, um, I don't know. <laughs> We're still <laughs> handling that. We... we I mean, in the CAD drawings we made, we found we have to adjust for going upstairs because the, the roof comes in on you faster than we anticipated. What's the uh, elevation change? Like, what's the lowest level from the floor, the Ooh. track height from the floor and the highest level? The lowest is the Coppercliff Industrial Spur, and it's probably only two feet from the floor. Okay. The highest is going up into the second floor of the upper deck. And, geez, you're standing on your... I mean, you, you're standing on another floor... And it's an upper deck of a two-deck layout, so, God, I don't know how many feet that is. So it sounds Easily. like it could be like eight or nine feet. Well, that's just... The second floor. The second floor would be... Well, we have lower ceilings than that. Sure. It's more like seven feet to get up there, but um, easily... Yeah, it's like 12 feet easy. Wow. How long so, does it take for a train to run from one end to the other? Oof. it's <laughs> a good question. Um, have some of the questions not been so good? No, 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 that's no, because I have to think about that. It probably would take a real hour. Really? To get from one end of the layout, like a, a real hour, not a scale no, hour. I understand. So, and we run with a four to one fast clock on the op session, so we've, like four hours. So that would be like what a typical run is on a 120 mile. How, and how long does it take for uh, an op session to, from start to finish? We do a six hour session. Wow. On a Saturday, On a probably? Saturday, yeah. yeah we start like, at noon and, yeah. you know, we finish when we finish and then we all go out to dinner afterwards. All right. Here's my new mantra on the, on the podcast, and I'm interested in your opinion, seeing as how you, you probably, you, are you the president or you've been the president of the club? I've never been the president. Never been? I am a vice president now. Okay. I just got it two years ago, I think I got into that <laughs> position. We rotate. <laughs> right. <laughs> So there's got to be a reason why they never wanted you as president. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of you're railroaded in the position and then you're stuck with it until you retire or you pass away. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the question I was going to ask you? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think my new mantra or mantra or mandate for the podcast is I think the, the key of model railroading is, can be summed up in three words. Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. That is, pr- yes, Absolutely. Yeah, I wholeheartedly, one hundred percent agree with that. Yes, I think I'm, I'm, I think that's going to be our new. Uh, it's a good one. I like that. All right, I like that a lot too. All right, say goodbye, Ted. All right, goodbye, Ted. Guess who I just interviewed? I'm here with Bernard, Helen of. Uh, well, everybody knows Bernard. You're on the podcast all the time. I am. I feel like I got to put on my sunglasses to talk to you. You could. I'm. I'm in the. I'm in the presence of a star. 
We're in we're in our little cubby room. Yeah, we're good in a, thing you we're keep... isolated. We're we're locked in. It's a good thing you're keeping the door open because uh, it's very quickly warming up in here. It is. It's a bit of a blast furnace, but it's a lovely day. So, so how many scans a... have you done so far today? I have done three scans. <laughs> that's, no, that's a good thing. Is it? Yes. Okay. I'm still trying to dig out from Texas. Yeah. Are you glad you came? This oh, oh so yeah, of course. Tell everybody where we are. We're at. The reason I came in here to interview you, Lawrence, specifically, I'm not Buzz. Lying. Yeah, Buzz. Bzz. I do that all the time. The podcast is only going to get worse and worse. <laughs> it's uh, Bernard Helen of uh, Mini Prince, miniprints.com. Tell them Lionel sent you. Tell them Lionel sent you. See if that helps. And it hey, always tell helps. them Lionel sent you. It always helps. And the reason I wanted to interview you next is because I was just talking to Walter Ostrinak. The Polka King. The Polka King. Did he I play like you? I am so excited. I talked to him for like 15 minutes. Was he playing while he was talking? No. Okay. I wouldn't have but been But you much. got the audio for the B-roll. <laughs> well, then I asked him if he would play bar- roll out the barrel, and he did. Like, you know, it's a huge deal. It's huge. Wild- Walter Ostenak, and he doesn't realize he's Walter Ostenak, or he does, and he doesn't care. He's won, like, awards. He's won three Grammys. Grammys. He's That's been on the, the big Johnny- one, right? He's been on the Johnny Carson show. He's been on Phil Donahue. He's been on the Tommy Hunter show numerous times, which is Canadians. And, of course. But I used to watch who, that. Everybody knows who Phil Donahue and Johnny Carson is. Three Grammy Awards, 21 times nominated. He, and he's sitting out back playing songs for back. you, taking requests from Lionel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so th- the trains are secondary for you right, right now. Right now, Bernard, Very secondary. I could even care less if you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard who? Where? No, that's not true. Where are we? What? That's not true. You know why I came to interview you next? I was so excited. I knew you were the only one I could talk to. <laughs> <laughs> no one else here really understands you, Lionel. No, no, exactly. <laughs> I understand you. Uh, say goodbye, Bernard. Goodbye, Bernard. All right, we're back with uh, Buzz. Bzz. I think we're going to go with Buzz from now on because you're starting to irritate me, which is very typical. <laughs> which is very typical of when we're doing a podcast. Okay. Or when I stop by the world headquarters of Mini Prince. Now, you do stop by voluntarily to be annoyed. Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Excellent. I'm think- I'm often, here's where you often what happens. I've been downtown Toronto to yes. visit some of my favorite places. Okay, yes. And I think to myself, how can my day get more annoying? Oh, <laughs> you've come to the right place. So the reason we're back on, I'm going to just mess these two together. You know what? We put in a little, I put in, the, put in elevator music and then we came back. Okay. So the reason we're here is because Bernard has, Buzz has, for mini prints. Tell, explain what this is. Okay, so I introduced mini prints, which were my 3D printed objects. Right. Then I introduced mini lights, which were my 3D printed objects with flickering fire LEDs in them. And I uh, put flickering fire in anything I could, pot-bellied stoves, campfires, lanterns, you name it. And then I was thinking, what can I do to further animate the 3D printed pieces? So I came up with the idea of mini sounds. So Mini Sounds is a collaboration. It's a Mini Prince original collaboration. So it's a three-way venture between myself, our friends at ITLA, Nick and Renee, right. and Iowa Scaled Engineering. And what I am doing is I'm creating a uh, Mini Sounds talking outhouse. And you get a, a lovely... A talking outhouse. A talking outhouse. The outhouse <laughs> talks to you. Why do I now feel like I'm on an episode of the Beverly Hillbillies? Oh, it's going to get worse. <laughs> it's going to get And uh, so you get a laser cut HO scale. It's HO scale only. You get a laser cut outhouse from ITLA. You get a 3D scanned figure by Mini Prints of someone sitting on the can with their pants around their sure. ankles. And you get a soundboard. You get a sound card with a speaker from ISE with some inappropriate um, comments, sounds. Iowa, Iowa Scaled Engineering. Correct. So now what was that conversation like? You, you, uh, you contacted Michael Peterson from Iowa Scaled Engineering. Told them that I wanted to record some inappropriate sounds to go with an outhouse yeah. model. And he said, I'm in. So you told him, I want to record some farting sounds. Absolutely. And he said, where do I sign up? He said, uh, they're in. <laughs> They said they'll create a brand, new, a brand new sound <laughs> module product just for me to put some farting So where do you sounds. get the sounds from, smart guy? Well, wouldn't you like to know? 
Are you volunteering? <laughs> no. This is just the prototype. <laughs> we could get. Actually, someone asked me whether that was you yeah. today. Someone said, "Is that Lionel?" <laughs> <laughs> so. When, are, when can people expect to purchase this? Uh, you can sign up at miniprints.com slash outhouse. It's available for pre-order now. Uh, there is the, the list price is $34.99 US, and it will be released in December. So you get all three items, the outhouse, the 3D scan, the soundboard, including the speaker, for $34.99 US. And what kind of reaction are you getting from the general public? It's been really shitty. <laughs> It's a it's a crappy product, <laughs> but <laughs> would you expect anything less from me, Lionel? No. Would you expect anything more from me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's been uh, gangbusters. As a matter of fact, I think the Iowa skilled engineering guys are in a little bit of shock uh, because they're going to have to make me quite a few of these little really? things. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, now I'm going to have to track down Michael Peterson and have that conversation. With you're going to have to track him down. All right. All and right. it's and it's just the beginning. There are many more mini sounds coming. What are some of your ideas? Well, okay, you don't want to tell ideas on the air until you do them. Let's put it this way. What I will say is I'm open to ideas. So if oh. anyone would like to let me know what they would like to see, the model right now is something laser cut wood right. from ITLA, something 3D scanned or drawn from, from Bernard at Mini Prints, and some sort of sound from ISE. So I've got a whole bunch of ideas, but there's more coming and I'm open to more ideas. I think you've used up more than your allotment of time. We're at the uh, where are we? where are we're at we're at OVR Ottawa Ot- Otter Valley Railway at the big show that our buddy Lauren has put on. We don't have a nickname for Lauren. We got to get a nickname for Lauren. Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> and in conclusion, all I will say is <laughs> <laughs> But I've interviewed you before. Oh, yeah. At, at uh, like, Springfield and places like this. Yeah, yeah, big, big train shows. So we're now speaking with Chris Palmares. That's right. Uh, Paul Maris. Paul Omaris. Paul Omaris. Yeah, I remember you telling me once at Springfield how to pronounce it. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a couple. I know. And then you kind of disappeared. I couldn't find you anymore. Well, for part of that was the pandemic. I mean, there was a lot of people you couldn't find for a little while. Yeah. So, so now you're working for Intermountain. Intermountain. How'd you end up at Intermountain? Well, you know, I, I was minding my own business one day, and then Ken Patterson calls me up out of the blue. <laughs> hey, Chris, call Glenn at Intermountain right now. I mean, like, right after you get off call. You, you know what I mean. Just right now. right now. Hey, Ken, let me get off the phone. I'll call him. <laughs> <laughs> and no more than two seconds, I was talking to Glenn, and Glenn was, hey, Chris, would you mind coming up? Uh, we, we got something that we need to ask you. Right. And, you know, they, what they were looking for was uh, some support on the model production side. And, okay. you know, I, I might have had my hand in that a little bit in yeah. the past, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, because originally when I first met you, you were at Thathern. That's right. Yep. And you were uh, one of the uh, developer guys. What do you call yourself, the project? Well, I'm, I'm a project manager now. I'm b- before I was at Athern, I was uh, a product developer for right, product developer, yeah. for Microscale, and then uh, I assumed more of a marketing role for Athern. Okay. So I picked up the product development hat again, and uh, starting to work with uh, Intermountain a lot more. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm employed there now, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's your full-time job, is Intermountain. Right, yes. And how long have you been with them? Since June. Okay. Of uh, 23. I think you landed on your feet, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny how that happens. <laughs> and you're living in Denver, or where do you live? I live in Lakewood. Um, actually, kind Which of looking is... to get out of Lakewood. And Where's Lakewood? Lakewood? Lakewood is a suburb of Denver. Okay. It, it's on, I'd say, the, the hilly side of, of Denver, closer to the mountains. Because you've been in Denver for a while, right? Yes. Because you were with uh, Kevin Rubel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happened there? Well. Don't tell me anything you don't want to, but I'm fascinated to know. Well, you know... Because he took over Red Caboose. Uh, Caboose Hobbies. Caboose Hobbies. Yeah. And what happened there was, you know, COVID provided a lot of benefit for, you know, people being at home and things. Right. For companies that were prepared to, to handle that. Uh, one of the things was a lot of things changed that were, you know, kind of on the outside. So on the, on the peripheral, right. unseen side of things. And a lot of them were county regulations oh yeah air particulate filtration <laughs> you know and these are just part of the the things of running a business that you know i guess the, the assumption is you're prepared to handle them yeah um in this case 
there there was no preparation to handle you okay. know the some of the county regulations that, sure. that that crept up in order to reopen the store you know right so it, it, it was decided that you it know, just kind of snowballed on itself yeah, yeah it snowballed on itself and so. then how long so then you kind of bounced around a bit I mean you are like in the hobby you are like well known like you are you are a, a guy in the hobby oh yeah. I mean, you've been you've been everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could agree with that. I, I've been to a few places, but I'm still exploring and still meeting new people and loving yeah. it. You know, right? Inner Mountain's a perfect fit for you. Well, you know, it's kind of coming full circle in yeah. a lot of different ways. Um, I was working with uh, Matt Gadinsky yes. in early 2006, 2007 time frame. Who's now with Rapido Trains? Right? Uh, he, no. he did Fox no, Valley. No, Matt was Fox Valley. That's yeah. right. I'm thinking of Matt Gentry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Matt Gadinsky was with Fox Valley, or he owned Fox Valley. Yeah, he owned Fox Valley. Because he, uh, he was a son-in-law from the Plains Hobbies. Yes. What was the fellow that owned that? I can't remember. The fellow that owned the Plains. Uh, Ron Sebastian. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So he was Ron Sebastian's son-in-law, and he had Fox Valley models, and he sold part of that to Scale Trains. Right. Okay. So you were working with him. So uh, well, I was. Matt Gadinsky was at Intermountain for that period of time. Okay. And I was a artist. I was, uh, you know, kind of contracting at the time. I was doing work for Microscale. Uh, I worked a little bit with the SP Historical Society. Right. That's, and, they're huge, aren't they? Oh yeah. I mean, and and it gave me an opportunity to also you know, jump over and help Matt out and yeah some things and it's funny now because i'm going through some of my old projects and oh there's my name on that one <laughs> you <laughs> no, know it seemed like i for, remember that <laughs> for, it seemed like for a while your name was on everything it seemed to me anyway it seemed like i was bumping into you everywhere and i was hearing your name everywhere i'm not sure and was that in vain or something <laughs> i'm not sure i'm not sure if it was good or not maybe it was in the post office <laughs> <laughs> dmv post office it's one of those okay so you're a perfect guy to ask this question to I mean, there was much hand wringing after the pandemic because sales went down for everybody. Mm-hmm. But I think the hobby is more vibrant than it's ever been. Oh, I agree completely. I mean, wh- how many years have you been working in the hobby? Shoot, I mean, going back to I'd say two thousand two. So twenty years. Yeah, you've been working in the hobby, active in the industry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you've seen a lot, of, and like it's, your feeling is that it's vibrant. Well, yeah, I think it's. I think that there, there's a lot of development and there's a lot of expansion. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you what. Let me back this up a minute. I saw the hobby in the 90s. Right. And I see the hobby now. And there's a huge, there's a huge step forward in communication. I like that. You know, because I remember, I remember trading photographs with friends of mine, and we were just shooting everything. Yeah, to try to share like inspiration and things like that, you know. And what what I remember is that's all changed now. Now we have websites, you know. It's like we go on yeah rail car photos, and we could pretty much pull up any sort of build <laughs> car that we want. Yeah. I mean, th- this was unheard of. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's why I think what's going to make this hobby just explode is the fact that it's so much information is available now mm-hmm. compared to the way it was 30 years ago. At your fingertips. Yeah, and you get to, you can be friends with people all around the world, find people that you're interested Like there's a fella in uh, Switzerland, Robin yeah. Felder. I think I got that right, Robin. And uh, he was a condu- he was a locomotive engineer in Switzerland. Now he's gone to the police academy, but he sends me stuff on. We message back and forth. Mm-hmm. We would never have known each other. Like, there's no way you would become acquaintances or friends with a guy in Switzerland. That's true. Without this new world, and it's just like poured gasoline on this hobby. As far as I'm concerned, you know. Speaking about that, I think I was kind of you know. Right in the middle of that transition from 1995 yes. to 2000. I think that, that's a good time, yeah. That, that's when, you know, I saw a lot of websites sort of just pop up. Yeah. You know, and really focused websites, too, about, like, certain railroads, certain time frames of railroads. Just blogs and things like that were just shooting out of all these different places. Yeah. And it was just like... Where have you Where's, been? <laughs> yeah, where have you been? Like, there's one that I love called Appalachian Railroading. Yeah. And it's these guys that just, it's all about Appalachian Railroading, some great layout design, some great mm-hmm. layout plans, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, 
well, this isn't fair. Why wasn't this around when I was 20 years old? I'm telling you, better late than never, right? Yeah, that's for sure. I guess so. So what's uh, happening in Inner Mountain? These cars are cool, by the way. What are oh, the? Yeah. What is this I'm looking at? Well, you're looking at uh, one of our coal porters. We're looking at doing some uh, new variations on some of our coal porters. Our coal porters uh, were um, acquired from LBF, and we've been uh, enhancing them, improving them, and uh, just trying to create a better overall model. Uh, and... We're looking at the Aeroflows, the Aeroflow 1, 2, and the Cole Porters. Um, there's some recent things that have been happening within the prototype. Yeah. And a lot of, some, a lot of the railroads that had, well, I shouldn't say that, a lot of the power companies, leasing companies, they're trying to rearrange their assets. Okay. So railroads are picking up uh, some of these Cole Porters and things and patching them. Right. So Canadian Pacific, they, they acquired a bunch of uh, coal porters from LUSX, I think it is, and so they patched them, and they're running over on the Pacific Coast. And right we're now. talking about hoppers for yeah. Go, and it, why are you saying porters? I've never heard that term. Well, they're pretty much a gondola. Okay. Uh, and what they do is they have a rotary coupler that, uh, and right, they just yeah, turn yeah, the whole car yeah. upside down and spank it right, a couple right. times and make sure everything dumps out. Okay, so it's been well worth my trouble just to sit here and learn that new term. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, so you're working on those. What else is Intermountain doing? Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, we just took delivery of some 8,000 gallon and 10,000 gallon tank cars, and this is um, a lot of the build dates are about 1930s to 40s era, right? Um, coming into transition era. Uh, we also are delivering just in time for Train Fest, boo hoo, <laughs> <laughs> the Milwaukee boxcar with uh, that that was in assigned Miller service that had they had the the access hatches on the top of the boxcar, um, and they had like the little Miller emblem on the side of the doors and stuff so is train fest just done then i don't think so i don't want it to be it was it was one of my favorite shows well yeah it was like such a solid show oh yeah uh what did you think of this coming all the way from denver for this oh it was a blast i'm having a great time in canada yeah do you think you'd come back to this oh yeah yeah i mean i think it's going to become the desler of canada this one well good yeah Yeah, i mean uh, there's there's lots of opportunities for Shows yeah, I know those soundtracks guys from uh, that George guy. He's a problem. <laughs> oh, sorry, George. Didn't see you there. <laughs> uh oh, here he comes. No, I was just going to give you a sticker. Oh, a sticker. Because I forgot to give you one when we were talking I earlier. Well, I got more. How many? I got three more. Well, then I guess I want four. <laughs> you know what? You know what? If we're talking a minute. I got something I want to talk about. Um, okay, so the, the coal porters, what, and you got so much other stuff going. Yeah, we got a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, we're looking at new tooling projects, brand new projects. There's uh, several new projects that have not been announced that have never been done in RTR plastic. That okay, we're coming up with our announcement plan for. All right, so, a lot of a lot of neat stuff coming. All right, all right. Well, thank you very much, Chris. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, again. great to see you again, Lionel. I can hardly wait till our next interview. Well, it'll be probably Springfield, right? I guess it will be. All it's right. And that's only a few months away. I know. It's crazy. Or only a few weeks away, depending on when this podcast came out. Only a few days away, it feels yeah. like. Um, say goodbye, Chris. All right. Bye, Chris. Okay. Now I'm here with Dan Garcia. Of Ur- There's no button, Dan. Oh, my Just apologies. relax. Okay. Just keep the microphone here. Okay. It's all very automated. Ooh. I yeah. love technology. Let me tell you. It's I know, so yeah. good. Yeah. So uh, we're being uh, we're interviewing Dan Garcia of Rapido Trains, and he's waving to somebody. He's waving to the Bowser guy. It was nice to see Scott. Yeah, yeah. So we're here with Dan. Uh, so now, are you aware of the fact that the po- uh, Rapido Trains sponsors a podcast? Yes, I am aware of that. I do. I'd forgotten, but I do remember. <laughs> you <Thank> forgot. You. <laughs> How can you forget that? I apologize. There's a lot of things going on. Yes, I know. I woke up at five this morning. That's a little bit earlier than my normal bed, uh, my normal rise time. I'm still trying to recuperate from that. Like about five hours earlier? No, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> In my college days, maybe. So, if you ever listen to the podcast, one of our punch, one of our uh, lines for Rapido Trains is, "It's your, hang on, I mean, I got to remember, your fast track to model railroading fun." Rapido Trains, your fast track to model. Oh, I like that. That's good. I know. And if you guys, you guys should use it because we use it all the time. See, I was going to suggest it's my layout and I'll cry if I want to. (laughs) 
That's a whole, you're doing now. You're just doing songs. Speaking of songs, and? speaking of songs, I'm here interviewing you. I would say we're developing a friendship. True, I, I'd say that. That's fair. But honest to God, interviewing you after interviewing Walter Osternak is a huge letdown. That's absolutely fair. Yeah, I, that's right. You did have a good chat with him. Earlier. Oh, I did. Oh. It was fun. I never, I never had that opportunity. I've seen him perform before. But I've never had that opportunity to talk to him. So I was, I'm like a fanboy now. That was very pleasant chap. Oh, well, that's good. Were, were, were you going all googly eyed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you I have to wear your shades most of the time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll no, put them fair. on now. No, no, don't. Please don't. Yeah. You don't have there, to. There you go. I, I like to be able to look into your eyes. That way, I know that you're looking at me and not looking elsewhere. <laughs> now, where am I looking now? I don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> What's new at Rapido Trains? What uh, do we need to know? Um. Well, what you need to know is. Okay, you know what? When I say Rapido Trains, you have to say you're fast-track to model railroading fun. This will be the first time we've ever had an, a Rapido employee say that. You're fast-track to model railroading fun. You're fast-track to model railroading fun. Yeah, it's your okay. fast-track to model railroading your fun. Your fast-track to model railroading fun. Rapido, I, right? I don't know if I have the voice to do you this don't have, properly. Yeah, well... Trust me, you will probably end up on the cutting room floor. Uh, no, well, I, and I mean, I, I've always been told I have a face for has, radio. Has, jo- has Jason ever listened to your interviews on the podcast? You better hope he doesn't. I, you know what, honestly? <laughs> what employee number are you? I forget. You were like early, early, early. Well, I, I suspect that some of the guys probably figure I'm minus one or something, but... Uh, yeah. Well, you were like third or something. I was, yeah, I was number three. Yeah. Behind Bill Schneider. No, before Bill, but after Gene, S- uh, Gene So. Right. Who is no longer at the company. Right. Yep. Um, and I got to interview Bill Schneider. He's like way up the top of the list. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, th- he's a tall guy, so it's... Yes. You know, it's, yeah. You, guys, guys like us, we need step ladders <laughs> to reach his level. <laughs> um, so, okay. I have you here for a specific reason. Okay. Uh, one of the people that is a devoted AML fan, mm-hmm. his name is David Hyde. Okay. And he actually, by coincidence, happens to be a French horn player. Oh. The lead French horn player for the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Wow. Exactly. That's and, and, and pretty he's impressive, like, actually. It is very impressive. He's like, he's like world-renowned. Amazing. He, yeah. That's and very uh, cool. And him and I are like pals. Goofy Lionel and, <laughs> and the French horn guy <laughs> and, from and, the... And, and this, like, master French horn player. Yeah, the orchestra guy. Yeah. Cool. So uh, what I'm going to do one day when I go to see him perform at Dallas... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, like, when there's a lull, you know, there's always between songs yep. or between yeah, yeah. choices of music, whatever mm. they say. Uh, sorry, David. Uh, I, I'm going to go. <laughs> He's not going to hear this anyway, no. right? No. At the, at the opportune moment, I'm going to go, Go, oh, David! You're yes. number one! Oh. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Like, whenever I go to conscious, there's always that one guy that yells, Play Freebird! In between <laughs> songs. It's frequently me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you necessarily want to do that at the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Well, I but think I will anyways. If, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to talk them into doing a whole evening of Stomp and Tom music. Oh. I know. Oh, come on now. So does this mean you've never heard our commercials? No, I, I don't, oh, my God. I don't listen to podcasts. I apologize. Okay. I'm, you know what? I, I'm going to send you the commercials so that you can listen <laughs> as, to as, them. As excerpts. Yeah, I, I could get into that. Because David Hyde was the guy that took what our original ideas and turned them into professional commercials. Oh, well, Jingles. Jingles. Yeah. Having a guy who's that, you know, music. I'm surprised talented. Jason doesn't come into the office and go, Dan, Dan, have you listened to the jingle again this week? <laughs> um... It's funny. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm usually about person number six or seven by the time he makes it into the office. He's probably <laughs> forgotten at that point. <laughs> uh, do you think Dan Darnell's mad at me now? Uh, I don't know about mad. He's just, you know. He's irked. No, he's, he's surly. He's just surly. <laughs> because what happened is we're near the end of the show, and I took, him away, took you away from helping him pack up the stuff. Yeah. Well, how, how are the 44 tonner sales going? Very good. No um, kidding. Very well. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's a, kind of one of those like weird, neat little projects that kind of a little bit off out in left field but um yeah no done very well um, oh my god They're, you're gonna sell you're gonna need one boat to bring all those over oh god <laughs> you're we gonna wish <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but i mean they they look they do look really good. oh yeah and, and, you know, and you're, you're gonna sell a million of those yeah. freaking things and, and honestly hats off to bill bill that's bill's project and they've been that's they why we got to interview him. um so, go. so okay let's get back to david hyde yes so david hyde is an mkt modeler okay beautiful layout nice. beautiful layout and uh he calls me up the other day. He sends me a message, a text message the other day, and he says, Lionel, Lionel, can I ask you a favor? Mm. To which, of course, I replied, no. Of course, right? <laughs> but anyways, I said, all right, go on. And he said, is there any way you can get me 
copies of the MKT GP40 poster. Ah, this is, this who, is they're who it's for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's the guy that created the jingo. Mm-hmm. He's a Dallas Symphony Orchestra yeah. guy, and you want to be friends, suck up to them. Absolutely. And uh, so basically, I'm now on the air. I'm asking. So he will know that I've asked. <laughs> this is the official proof. Yes. It's, it's not just that, you know, Lionel, you called me last night at the office. Hey, do you mind doing me a favor? Right. No, this is like live on the air. We now have yeah. thousands of people verifying this fact that you have, in fact, asked me. Right now. And right now, David is listening to me asking you for these posters. MKT yes. posters okay. that he's desperate for. Right. So he was on the phone. We were doing a uh, podcast the other day, what we call the fans, and it's a bunch of guys, and uh, we're talk chit chatting, and he says he wants to buy an MKP MKT unnumbered from Lauren. Yep. And Lauren goes, I don't do that. I don't sell un- uh, unnumbered models. You have to buy at least six. Yep. And David goes, Well, I want twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Six? Last I checked, 12 is more than six, so I think it's probably okay. So anyways, yeah. So can you get me a couple of those posters? I can... I'm going to have to dig and figure out who's got them on their computer. But yeah, I can I can get you a couple of copies of those. Uh, when, when you make, po- do you make posters when you send stuff out? Like how, do you, how many posters would you make? Some, well, it's complicated. Yeah, everything. <laughs> to, to make it easy. You know what um, I've noticed when I, every time I interview you, what? at some point you'll say, it's complicated. Well, there, there's a lot of that. <laughs> Maybe that should be my catchphrase. Yeah. Dan Garcia, it's complicated. I think you should be uh. on the podcast more often. Even though you don't listen to it, yeah, you apologize. should be on it more because you have that kind of, you actually have a very engaging personality. I think I personally find it annoying. Uh, most people would find it engaging. That, that's fair. I, fair on both counts, I guess. Harsh, but fair on both counts. Um, that's not true. I think you're a lovely man. Thank you. Um, and if I was a female, I'd be attracted to oh, you. Oh, well, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> um, where I'm were we going punchy. with this? I I'm totally... getting punchy. I want these posters oh, for the David posters. Hyde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you asked how many posters would we make in a situation like that? So the reason I say it's complicated is it varies depending on what the situation is, what the purpose of the posters is. Right. Um, in the case of, like, say something on in a magazine and advertising, there actually are no posters. We've created the artwork. Right. And we've sent it to the magazine digitally. And then if we want copies of that, we can, we've got a color printer at the office. We can print those out. Okay. Um, if there's something, sometimes we'll send out posters to the stores, um, especially like, you know, trying to drop yeah. up orders before an order deadline, right? So right now we're doing like a mailer for all of our order deadlines that we've just announced for October 16th. And I don't even remember what all of them are. There's a no, lot. me neither. Um, that's good that you don't, because I work there and I don't remember. That's, that, that looks well fine on me. You don't even know me. about the podcast. I, <laughs> which it's like sponsor, a, it's like it's a which huge we sponsor. Oh man, yeah, yeah it's like that is the. So this was the this is the briefest description <sighs> I can give of the conversation Jason and I had. He says to me, "You should have a sponsor," and I go, "I don't want a sponsor. <laughs> Why not? It's too. I couldn't keep it straight. Yeah. If I was going to have a sponsor, it'd have to be somebody that's very free, very uh, forgiving, and uh, and, re- and really." It just wants to be part of the show. I said, you know what? I, I may know a guy. Yeah. I may know a guy. So him and I determined that he would be okay with yeah. me. If I said, finally, we just, I By said. Way, he would correct, he would probably correct you for him and I, just for the record. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I did it. Uh, okay. So <laughs> he so and I, I. I guess we'll know if he's listening because yeah, then he'll yeah, say, oh, exactly. correction on that. Um, so then we finally decided he was, uh, Rapido Trains was going to be the sole exclusive sub- sponsor yeah. of uh, the AML podcast. Mm-hmm. And he would just have to take his chances. On how good it was going to be, which I think actually it's pretty good. We're done a pretty good job. I, I, as someone who doesn't listen to the podcast, let me tell you, I actually have had a number of people say, you know, you should really listen to this podcast. It's called The Modeler's <laughs> Life. Yeah, okay, I kind of heard of them. <laughs> it's sponsored by Rapido Trains. <laughs> I don't tell them that part, <laughs> mainly because I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't get it. I should have been interviewing Darnell. I shouldn't even talk to you. Um, yeah. So... If you don't want to print them out, I'll print no, them no, out. No, no, no. We can print them out. That's okay, fine. perfect. The other half of the equation I was going to say is if we're doing something for dealers for sales packs, we'll print out usually several hundred, stuff them in an envelope, send them out, but we'll have extras. Okay. If I if we were doing that with those, very happy to put aside a couple for, for you and David. Yeah. Um, in, Try it. in this case, what I'll tell you what I'll do. So we've got our color printer. It prints out, you know, standard eight and a half by 11. Right. Print those out for you. Um, 
I assuming I have permission. If I don't, I'll make permission. I don't know. We'll yeah, out. I'll work if, on. If you want it, if you can get access to a larger format printer, then maybe print them out on a. Larger there we format. go. Now okay. we're on. Now. I can handle that. All right. Because I got to get this guy from the Symphony Orchestra, yeah. the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, off my back. And even if you give him a couple of smaller copies, as you know, sort yeah, of a so, joke, well, here's yeah, the printer. yeah, this is what it's yeah. going to look like. Yeah. And then actually, boom. <laughs> yeah. Right, there the we go. One. He's actually a very nice man. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, and he's on, talented. Guy. The guy plays in the symphony orchestra. I he's going to be talented. And it's not like the Syracuse Symphony Orchestra or the or the. Oh, why are you throwing shade at Syracuse? Uh, all right, how about? Uh, I mean, f- maybe they deserve it. All I don't right, know how Syracuse about the Split Lip Manitoba <laughs> <laughs> Symphony Orchestra? There's only like a half a dozen, really. You know, there's Dallas or Chicago, New York, and mm-hmm. you know, there's only he's world renowned. San Fran's another one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a personal friend of mine. That's pretty cool. I can get you an autographed photo if you want. Eight by ten, glossy. Well, I, I would think that I would like to, you know, listen to him before I get the photo. <laughs> well, so then if you... fly me down to Dallas. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. Although maybe don't make it in the summer. I hear bad things about the yeah, yeah. down there in the summer. Oh, how are sales going? Because there's been much hand-wringing in the industry. Uh, it, it's... Hmm. How do I frame this? So, I, in, in my position at Rapido, I managed to talk to a lot of dealers. And a lot of them have said that this has been a bad summer. Right. Like, worse than, than they remember even pre-COVID. Okay. But interestingly, they've a lot of them have also said sales have also picked up pretty substantially as of mid-July to early August, which okay. is much earlier than yeah. normal. Because normal, like, this is this is a fall, winter, spring yeah. hobby, yeah. right? In the summer, no one wants to be in their basement. Everyone's out in, in the garden or working on their ATVs and, or yeah, yeah. bikes, right? We're, we're, not, we're not in basement. But... They said that they've noticed that sales have picked up pretty substantially okay. towards the end of the summer, which is unusual. Well, and and if this continues, hey, that that's that's a good sign. I think there so. had to be a lull after the pandemic. Oh, there had to be. People were cooped up in their in their houses. Yeah. They everyone needed to get out. Yeah, yeah. And this is a hobby that you know every time it dips, it never goes back down as far as it was before. It goes down, then it goes up, and then re- yeah, it's it's very cyclical. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's always growing. I feel like this hobby is yep. always growing. Yeah, I I don't I don't think. I mean, unfortunately, as a hobby of older, you know, older people. I think that's, but I think that's starting to go. Like, I really well, think that because of digital media, way more younger people are that, involved in it. That's a very, very fair point. And, and, but I, I, maybe this is, you know, the beauty of the hobby is that you can do so many different things in it. You don't just yeah. have to be building cars. Yep. You can put track down and run trains. You can build layouts. You can do the research online or even in person on, on the various things. There's so many different angles. And uh, I've been talking to Gordy Robinson, the president of the NMRA. Mm-hmm. This is becoming my new mandate for the podcast. Uh-oh. I think I can sum up th- the value of this hobby in three words. Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. That's that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be my Those new. are three very good words. Yeah. I think, that, I think it's like the secret sauce. You get into the castle and you're like, Yep. Well, it's not about hobby model railroading at all. It's about the people. Yeah. 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 And yeah. There's, there's a lot of really interesting, neat people in this Yeah. Hobby. Like David, you know. There who, you go. And, I mean, how about... Rod Stewart. Thank you. I was going to say, how about, you know, guys like Rod Stewart or how many different actors? Michael, Gro- Michael, Michael Gross, Gross is another one. There's lots of really neat people in this. Yeah. Neil Diamond. Yep. Tommy Hunter, who used to be a... He was a Canadian icon. I country and Western. Yeah. I didn't know He Tommy was a huge been, model I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, Neil Young. Neil Young, exactly. Years at my very first introduction to George of George's Trains, which was very famous in Toronto. Mm-hmm. I actually my my dad took me to his house before he had the store. That's where how far back I go with oh, George's wow. Trains. And I mean, as the years went by, I got to know him. Mm-hmm. And there was all kinds of famous people that went through that oh, store. Yeah, yeah there's the Richard, uh, the current owner, his. All right. Georgia Sun. Yeah, exactly. Um, has stories of some of the people that have gone through. Yeah, and exactly. yeah, it's, All right. it's pretty incredible. So we'll finish this up. Okay. Uh, we both agree you're going to help get David off my back. Yes. Yes. I can agree to those terms. All right. All right. That's it. Okay. So you go, and now you're going to go back and finish helping Dan, even though it's all done now. <laughs> that's, is that what you, so is that what you wanted me to do? You wanted me to come at this time? Is I mean, it, uh, um, if, if I stamp my foot really hard, <laughs> right, what is that? Uh, I mean, no, no, I, absolutely, yeah. it's not fair to Dan for me to do this. <laughs> Say goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Dan. So what, so what did you think of that show, Kelly? Oh, I thought it was fantastic. I love the interviews. I, it's, it, anytime you do a, 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 a 
train show or a train or a, a, a event like this where you're talking to all the people it's it's wonderful it's it, wonderful it is it always done ends up and, sound- and it's entertaining and educational oh it's and you know what it is it's and in, it's infotainment infotainment <laughs> 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 uh um what did you think lauren what did you think, I thought, Skew? Hey, Skew, what did you think? Skew. <laughs> you thought the energy in the room was amazing that day. Um, the knowledge and breadth of what we had in that room was awesome. I mean, we had experts on all different types of prototypes there. And, you know, for, for the size of crowd we had, we had a packed room and some of the best people in our hobby. But I go back to two things, friendship, fellowship, and we had fun. And I feel mm. everyone who came that day, they felt that. And I tried to have that as my big me- message that we're in this hobby together and that it was a day of friendship and fellowship in the hobby in the modeling community. And you know, you know, learn how I, I enjoy uh, giving you the gears, right? You love it. And I love get, getting it. Okay. Well, do you think all those people that were standing in line waiting to give you money were enjoying it? <laughs> oh, a few of them gave me the gears in the parking lot. Don't you worry. <laughs> Are you going to fix that for next? Actually, Actually, let me, before I, we talk about it, let me tell you, I got there about noon and I'm like, the first thing I notice is there's like 20 guys in line trying to pay for stuff. And I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm, th- I'm walking there and I'm going, holy crap. Like, look at this lineup of people trying to pay for stuff. It really was. It really, truly was. If you're within uh, 200 miles of the uh, Otter Valley Railroad. Next year, you got to go because it's it's well worth the trouble of going to the show. It's well worth it. It was uh, it really was a lot of fun. Although I I think I added to the atmosphere when I told you to get pizza and and sodas and have that for people. I think that was what put it over the top. Buck a buck a slice, buck a pop. That was a great idea. Yeah, we had some extra and I gave away some food. But no, you're right. The counter the speed has to improve, and we're going to have that result. Um, I did a record day for walk-in. I did a record day for pre-order sales. And we have, every year I keep saying this, Lionel, how am I going to top next year? Well, I top, I top 22 with 23. And I've got a big idea of how I'm going to top 23 for 24 already. And there was no, mm. there was no cannon. There was no bouncy castle. There was no little trampoline. There was none of that. Well, what happened to all that stuff? We had a poker king. That's true. You did have the Poker King, and I'm saving him for the next show. He's going to be the last interview we hear from the uh, OVR. I was like, I was sitting there going, I'm talking to Walter Ostinac. And he was so pleasant to be with. He was such a, he was such a gentleman. And he then was he was signing autographs, too. I, of course he was. He's Walter Ostinac. He's been on every TV show. He was on the Johnny Carson show. He was on, he's been, he's won, uh, what do you call the things for singing? What are those ones? Grammys. Grammys. He's won a couple of Grammys. He's like, this guy's like, he, and I kept thinking to myself, it's Walter Ostinac. I'm not very good around famous people. I always think that I'm going to be way cooler than I am. And then I'm always what? like a complete goober. I'm like, you're Walter Ostinac. But Lionel, when you think about it, that John Candy and Eugene Levinstein had a sick about the guy that we had as yes. our lunchtime entertainment. I know. You how mainstream he Walter is, yeah. He he won four Grammys, was nominated fourteen times. He won a million dollar Dream Home. He's been in 30, 35 music as audio or background background music. I mean, but he still loves playing at these little holes. And I said to him when I called him out, I said, "Do you want to come to Tillsburg?" Oh, I love coming to Tillsburg. I come there four or five times a year. And then a week later, I saw him in Elmer doing Oktoberfest. And, uh, and the storytelling was amazing with him. He's uh, just so much energy, even at his age. I, so much. And uh, hmm. I'd forgotten about the Million Dollar Dream Home. So, uh, Kelly, the actually, the hospital that I go to all the time, uh, Princess Margaret Hospital, has every year this mega, what do you call it, grand, mega uh, giveaway with tickets. What do you call it, a raffle? Is it a raffle? Princess Margaret, uh, Millionaire. Cherry charity dream home like they have different prizes oh they have a ton houses, of prizes cars, boats, it's a char- charity raffle or something like that yeah. yeah yeah they have a ton of prizes and they give away like a cottage and a home and everything and that's right walter ostenak won it one year I did hmm. yeah i haven't won anything well <laughs> so uh, I, said, I said i said to somebody about five years or four years ago i said i've been buying tickets every year i haven't won nothing and then i went 
Well, I guess that's not true. I kind of did win something. <laughs> one, yeah. You won pretty big one. Yeah, I won yeah, pretty big. Yeah. That's why we raise money for them every year. Um, yeah. uh, okay. So we, uh, so we enjoyed the show. So now tell us, Lauren, I want you to tell us as briefly as you can, which is absolutely impossible for you. Uh, but uh, tell us about the latest container you got in and all the stuff you got in. So in early part of October, we got in a 20-foot can, which was 100% ours. It was a nice, lovely red CAI can. And it had our pipe car, and it has been massively successful. I got customers all over the world. Um, we've been selling pipe loads with it. Um, I had to reorder uh, 500 more bags of pipe because we've mm. been going through it. Um, our talented artist, Hilda, he made hand loads for our, our, our other car, the NSC 6000. We went through 500 handmade loads in a week. Wow. Took her two months to make 500. And she's kind of like, well, it's going to be a little bit. I'm like, we'll make more when we have time. Don't worry, dear. So how do people around the world order stuff? from Otter Valley Railroad? So a lot of people are ordering on our website at ovrtrains.com or they're messaging our Facebook. And my my beautiful wife, Sarah, has been doing daily updates every couple of days on Facebook, updating people where, where stuff's at. She's been taking over a lot of the customer relationship. We've added new staff to the OVR, so we've actually expanded OVR's ranks. So can I ask uh, you a question? Sure. If somebody wants to order some Rapido trains, your fast track to model railroading fun. Rapido trains, your fast track to model railroading fun. Uh, do you do you sell Rapido trains there? We have the, the fast full track line of Rapido trains. <laughs> <laughs> as you know what, as soon as I said it, I thought, ah. Uh, <laughs> it's the Pavlov dog. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, even if you want to get a pair of trilliums, I know we could we could help you out with the trilliums. I know we helped you, Lionel. No, exactly. I I bought a couple and I don't even need them. They look nice though, Lionel. Oh, they're sweet. That's a sweet. I know what I'm going to do with them. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do something cool with them. I got a plan already. When I saw them, uh, I thought I'm got. I got a plan. I'm going to do something cool with them. Industrial switching. No, you don't have to tell me what my plan is. I, no, I know what my plan is. You have no idea. I'm not going to tell anybody until I actually do it. So there you go. Um. So okay, what about what? Are, what do you got coming down the pipe? So oh yeah, and so do you. When these containers back up to the dock, or back up to your store, do you guys have to hand? You must have to hand bomb every box off of there, do you? So he actually showed up thirty minutes earlier than I thought. So he showed up at seven thirty, and I was driving frantically to the shop. I went over to the neighbor who has the forklift truck, and we just started taking each skid out of the container one by one. I drop them on the back concrete pad. I sort them, and then. X, X amount goes into the store uh, one side and the other amount goes into our offsite storage. And after every couple of days, I pull more and more stock out until I empty the storage unit. Um, who has a forklift there? Fastenal. Oh, okay. Are they in that building? Yep. And are you qualified to operate a forklift? No, but I'm qualified to ask him and give him a pizza. Oh, there. So he does it for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's and good. was it seven thirty in the morning or seven thirty at night? In the morning. Oh, what time do you usually get up? Six. When Isabel wakes up and says she's hungry. Oh, okay. Well, that's what your wife is for. Just tell your wife to do it. And see how that, see how that works out. <laughs> I'll tell her. Lionel said that. <laughs> no, don't be dragging me into this. Uh, don't be dragging me into this. On the suggestion uh, of Lionel, I said that. No, 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 no. Don't be dragging me into this. Well, and tell us, tell me, see if you can explain to me, because I'm not, I don't fully understand, because I don't fully understand most things. Um, what was this little movie that was made about your store? So, the day of our pop-up event, there was a young lad who was doing some B-roll uh, filming and editing of just the event in our shop, and he did about a three-minute video. I posted that on our Facebook and our YouTube. And he is at the at Fanshawe College in London, and his class is uh, communications, direction, and and media. So he asked me and said, "Can we come back and interview you? We want to do a documentary on 
Otter Valley Railroad, your 20th years in business, and yourself, Lauren. So one Saturday, he came back with his crew, which was five in his in his class project. And we did a 20-minute documentary on Otter Valley, how our company's been, what sets us apart in the industry, why we're a mom and pop, why it's important to support, support a mom and pop business, what we hope to achieve in the next 20 years, what we're achieving right now. And then we also talked about our excitement of our container that was just one day away from arriving. Um, and who, and where can people see this video? Is it anywhere to be seen by public? This should be out at the end of November. It'll be on our Facebook and on our YouTube page. And okay. we'll have the rights to the documentary. Okay. And what about the one that's on your YouTube page now? Or on your on your on your website now, right at the top of the page? What's that one? Who made that one? So that was my friend Tim. And that was a year and a half ago. We had a YouTube Mothers meetup in the summer. Right. And he actually filmed the entire store with a drone inside. Mm. Inside a drone inside. Oh, wow. Hey Kelly, that's what they should let me do is run a drone inside. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Flight wow. control, we have liftoff. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> that sounds like a really bad idea. Yeah. And you know what would happen, don't you, Kelly? Uh, I'd go down I'd go down the aisle with Rapido trains. You're fast-tracked to model railroading fun. If it's M, if it's H-O, the fast track is Rapido. And start smacking into all the boxes and then chasing no, it. Probably would tip over by racks the next thing you know, yeah, it's a yeah. reaction. Yeah, exactly. Uh, How am I going to get Bob Fallowfield back on the show? Every time I ask him, he's like so freaking busy. What's he doing now? He's got that Waterloo Central and he is the president of the uh, not for profit. And, you know, they painted a caboose up for their Christmas, they've got a huge Christmas program. Um, funny thing is my sister-in-law she wants tickets and she's like what do you know about the Wadu central i'm like i know all the major players that run it she goes so what do you mean i'm like i know all the major players that run it what do you want to know well i can't get tickets and i'm like all right i'll ask a couple people and it's a really hot ticket i mean they've got the steam locomotive there they've got the rdc they're switching cars two or three days a week they're actually switching industrial cars on the waterloo central wow huh and interchanging cool. with CN. They got a GMD-1. They repainted into, into green. Rapido trains. Doesn't work unless I say it. Okay. <laughs> Rapido trains is doing a special Waterloo Central GMD-1 with portion of the proceeds going to their not-for-profit. Wow. All right. Okay. Well, we got to stop talking now. Yeah. We got to get uh, Bob back on. And we should... Yeah. He's, you know what we got to find out is if uh, they're pull. I don't think the Polar Express runs anywhere in Canada. Mm. We got to get Mike May back on here yeah, and find, find out, out. the Polar. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Hey, uh, before we go, Kelly. Yeah. Um, you listen to all the podcasts and some of them like four times. Yeah. And uh, like when you're done, like when you've done listening to every single podcast on the free channel and Patreon, like about four times. Like, what do you do then? Well, if I'm working, I try to find something else to listen to. And, uh, there, there are a number of podcasts out there that you can, but are they any, to. but are they any good? Yeah. There are a couple of them worthy. Okay. Uh, well, you know what we think? We think, uh, because we're, because Kelly, what is, how's the NMRA going to grow? Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. I, I like, uh, what Lauren did with, uh, friendship fellowship and, fun well lauren's not running the show is he i know but i'm just saying that's <laughs> but you're oh, right so you, it's fellowship, so, you, fellowship. so you don't like what i okay that's no great. i do I'll, like what I, you, i'm that, making a either i'm putting a note in your it's file morphing, right now it's morphing that's what's happening. oh okay i'm putting a note in your file right now all right I'm um sorry. no don't be sorry <laughs> now you're starting to sound like scott no no that's golly gee yeah, no, he he's always saying, I'm sorry. You, you know what he used to, but now he's filling, finding his oats and now he's just making, you know, he's making smart ass remarks to me. So we're going to have, we're going to have a chat about that at Springfield. That Springfield um, AML hotel, that's, that puppy is filled up. Oh, Where are you yeah. staying, Lauren? At the AML headquarters. a boy. We're going to have a great uh, pizza party. It's going to be great on the Saturday night. Everybody come to the pizza party on Saturday night. And if you're there on Thursday... We have a very informal dinner at the uh, steakhouse right beside the uh, hotel, and I think it's a Longhorn. 
and we have a very formal dinner where everybody gets together on the Thursday night around. And and what happens for about an hour and a half before we actually have dinner is a scooter keeps calling me. Where are you? Well, I'm I'm like 10 minutes or down the road farther than when you called me last time. And how long is it going to take you to get here? Uh, I don't know. I'm like 50 miles from the place. I guess like 45 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes later. Where are you? Well, now I'm like 20 miles farther down the road. <laughs> so, I think the most important question there with Scooter and you for Springfield this year is, are you going to give him the bag of tools so he doesn't use the chair as a hammer? No, I gave him a, a baseball bat last year. That was good enough. <laughs> so in answer to your question, Lionel, about the Polar Express, yeah, there's, there's only two places in Alberta, Canada, at oh, Calgary, really? in the area of Calgary and Edmonton. That's uh, the only two. We got to get these guys. What's the play? What is it? Where is it? The Bob Fallowfield works? The Waterloo Central. Central. Yeah. We got to get them involved. They'd love doing something like that. Yeah. I was talking to our buddy Mark, Marcus Neubacher the other day, and they get like a 50, 60, 70,000 people at that thing. And they only have like three miles of track. All right. We've talked way too much now. Now we could. So, anyways, Kelly. If you haven't, if you've listened to all of our podcasts like three or four times, and you're absolutely looking for something else to 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 listen to, and because we're we're we want uh, the hobby to be fellowship, 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 we highly recommend that you go. Or we recommend. I don't know if I can go highly. We recommend that you go and maybe check out other podcasts such such as uh, Second Section with our buddies uh, Andy Dorsch and Mike Ostertag over there, or you could even go and check out. Uh, Around the layout with uh, uh, Ray or not and uh, smoking Ray or not, we got to come up with a nickname for Ray. That's what we yeah, need, really. And uh, oftentimes he has our buddy uh, uh, Tony Cook on there. Cook, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, Tony decided to go work with those guys, which is very cool because he's still on the air. So that's cool. Yeah. Um. Anyways, that's a uh, something else people could do. Or you know what? If you don't want to do that, just listen to ours over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can or if, you you're, our... if you're not if you're not on Patreon, you can get on Patreon to hear more. Yeah, and then if you well, we're going to do the email address okay. first. Okay, the email. You want me to do the email? Address? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, the email address is modelerslife at gmail dot com. That's modelers with one L, like sale, not two L's, like Otter Valley. Nice. That's what I was looking at. And or you know another, you know, you know another good two L one <laughs> is Tilsonburg. Oh, yeah, Tilsonburg. Yeah. My back still aches. It hurts when I hear that <laughs> word, <laughs> Tilsonburg. Says you want to work in the tobacco fields of Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg. My back still aches when I hear that word. So then, okay, if you miss that email address, you go to our website, amodelerslife.com. Click, click on the picture of the moderately agitated male boy in a slightly agitated state. Um, and the boom, the email address comes up automatically. And if you do like this show and you would like to listen to more of the AML nation, if you go click on the Patreon link for just a few cents a day, you can have twice as much uh, AML podcasting every week. And that's where we have the most fun. We have a lot of fun over there on the Patreon channel. Lots and lots, lots and lots of fun. And when you're done doing all that, Go over to OVRTrains.com and buy some Rapido trains. At, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're fast-tracked on model railroading fun. I, I got to admit. <laughs> Boy, what would we do without you, Kelly? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't what know. day are you getting in at Springfield? I uh, Actually, uh, my flight got changed again. I have not very much luck with airlines. Um, I actually come in on the 23rd. I was supposed to come in on the 24th. Okay. They, so what day is the 23rd? Do I have a calendar uh, in front of Tuesday me? Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Okay. Or what, uh, I can tell you in a second. Tuesday. Yeah, tell me in a Tuesday. Yeah, is it Tuesday? Tuesday. I come in what on you, Tuesday. You're coming in too early. Well, I was going to come in on the 24th. I was actually coming in in the morning. I was going to get a car and I was going to see if uh, head down and see if uh, Chris Adams Oh, that's See, a good idea. That's what I wanted to do before the, the mad rush when everybody's going to be there. And then um, that got changed now. So I got two is days. There a, that, gonna be, is there going to be a mad rush to Chris Adams' place? I don't know. I, I, I Did we hear that there might be a, do a, 
Well, no, I, we should talk about that. Um, <laughs> I stopped myself from that. Um, no, I don't. I would well, say if there's going to be a mad rush at Chris Adams says we ought to at least warn him. Yeah. Well, he, maybe he maybe he's having an open house and he doesn't know it. Yeah, it's possible. Who knows? Yeah, I think he's spending both days at Springfield this year. Yes, he is. And he was yeah. going to share a room with you. He was going to share a room, but he's going to share it with uh, Bill Chapin. Okay. I don't then, blame him for that. Nobody, then, yeah, well, nobody wants to share you know, a room with me. Nobody wants to see you in pajamas. And then, of course, uh, Brad Brad uh, Williamson was going to share a room, but now he's coming with his lovely wife. Yeah, Missy. So, Missy. All the way from Crater, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. All the way from down, downtown <laughs> Crater, Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I think we got it covered now. I think that's yeah. it. I think we're done. Are you ready, yeah. Lauren? I'm ready. So remember, remember, a Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten mom and pop hobby shops. Life is sponsored by Because I Love Sushi, with seven convenient locations in the greater Busted Knuckle area. It's another Lincoln Homer.